I'm Nightline. Hair wars. Americans spend $6.7 billion a year on hair care to keep it up or down or straight or long. In a fiercely competitive industry, we go inside the lab where scientists torture and tease in a quest to end the bad hair day. From the global resources of ABC News, with Terry Moran, Cynthia McFadden, and Bill Weir in New York City, this is Nightline, January 3rd, 2011. Good evening, I'm Terry Moran, and we're going to begin tonight with a big number, $6.7 billion. That's the amount Americans spend each year on hair care products, those shampoos and conditioners, gels and sprays to help people feel better about what they see in the mirror. Well, with so much at stake, you can bet that hair care products companies are working overtime to get a leg up on the competition. But you might be surprised at the degree to which they have looking good down to a science. Here's Sharon Alfonsi. Don't hate me because I'm beautiful. Because I didn't hate her. I just wanted to scalp her. Frizzy to smooth. From Those commercials of long, flowing, shiny hair taunt women like me. In the business, they have a name for it, for that shot right there. When they do this with their hair and it comes down all shiny. Yeah, we call that hair gymnastics. Bob McDonald is the CEO of Procter & Gamble, the company that makes Pantene, the market leader in hair care. They sell some $3 billion of hair products every year, part of a $48 billion global industry. Every woman in the world believes, rightfully, mm -hmm. that she has damaged hair. Nappy, nasty, and the curls just kind of fall out. This side was like up here, and then this side of my hair was like down here. Frumpy would be a good word for me. Just feel frumpy. Last year, U.S. sales of Pantene dropped 9%. Women traded down to low-priced rivals like Suave. Pantene is hoping to win back those thrifty women and those who are willing to pay anything for good hair. Anything from a straw to a paintbrush. Women, in fact, like me. My bad hair days have been captured on camera for 15 years. To deal with my big hair in Mississippi, I used a big scarf. Big mistake. At Hog TV, the Arkansas humidity was not my friend. My hair was so big, it concealed the weather map. Eventually, I got so frustrated, I chopped it all off and bleached it in Seattle. I was going for Sharon Stone, but ended up more Dennis the Menace. There is even a website run by a total stranger dedicated to tracking the trials and tribulations of my hair. Every company with a hair care line wants a piece of women like us. Hair care is a $6.7 billion business in the U.S. This most recent formula, we used uh, analytical equipment and uh, knowledge we gained from NASA. That's right. He said NASA. But is it really a breakthrough or just another marketing gimmick? After all, this will be Pantene's third makeover since 1999. But the company swears they've changed more than the bottle. In our research and development department, we have over a thousand scientists and technical staff, and they cover at least 17 disciplines. We have more PhDs than the combined MIT, Berkeley, and Stanford staff. Senior scientist Jenny Thomas showed us around their research and development center. We've had to introduce a lot of new instruments to learn more and more. So, for example, an atomic force microscope is one that NASA was putting on to their Phoenix lander to study the surface of Mars. Uh -huh. And soon after that, we brought it in to study how hair interacts with ingredients. What they were using to study Mars, you're using to study hair. Yes. This image here of your hair. This is my hair. This, this is, is your hair. hair. <gasps> this is eight, 800 oh. times magnification. Okay. And you know what? How does my hair here? look? It's it's not bad. In every lab, rows and rows of hair. Procter and Gamble is the largest purchaser of hair in the world. They use it to test how products work. This is high quality virgin hair. Mm -hmm. And so we'll buy, this is a pound of it, and we'll buy this hair. This is a pound of hair? This is a pound of hair. And this is hair from probably 600 women. Where does all that hair come from? Chris Rock's documentary, Good Hair, showed the lengths hair hunters will go to. This is the place where we process human hair. We've paradise. At P&G, they bleach, color, and damage that perfect hair to find out how it will react to certain products. Then they hang it up in these temperature-controlled labs to see how it will do in different climates. Oh, it is hot. 
These four hair samples are confined to a humidity room to test how Pantene's latest product will stand up to frizz. Is this like, I mean, is this the st final stamp of approval if you can get past 80 degrees and 80 de percent humidity? Yes, it's a good product. Especially for an anti-frizz or a smoothing product. Yeah. This is a torture test. And your hair can stay looking good after 48 hours in this room. You know you're onto something. That's big. a miracle product. Yes. Yeah. Okay. They even conduct studies in hotel rooms that involve watching women knowing participants in the shower. Still very smooth. I like it was moisturized very well. To observe how different people use their products. Great. Uh -huh. So many focus groups to figure out what women want. Raise your hand. How many people are having a bad hair day at least once a week? That's a great hole right there. And so much research to determine if they can deliver. I had to test out that new NASA-inspired formula myself. I feel like a new woman. <laughs> With a little slow-mo, I performed a bit of hair gymnastics of my own. It's the moment every woman wants and the one every product claims it can deliver. With billions of dollars up for grabs, it's a race to perfect the science and products that go straight to a woman's head. I'm Sharon Alfonsi for Nightline in New York. Hair gymnastics. Sharon Alfonsi, thanks very much for that report.